What's up? It's Christmas Stone Fox Media. And today, I'm going to try to come at you in a little bit more calm manner. Because this has been the most fucked up week I've ever fucking had to deal with, with any game console launch ever. Any fucking console ever. I told them to take the rest of the week off, to not give us any more news, to not say shit, no more press conferences, shut the fuck up, go home, eat bagels. But they don't want to fucking listen. So I have to bring you more bad news, and I don't take any pleasure in being the bearer of bad news. But it just fucking keeps coming. Apparently, with the Microsoft update, without the Microsoft update, you can't do shit. Anything. These are their words. Uh, in an actual interview uh, with eGadget, Senior Director of Project Management, Al Pinello explained that even disc-based games won't work with the console until the patch is installed. Uh, that's uh, due to the fact that it was shipped with an old operating system. Now, a lot of people know that, you know, you, you can't, you like, you know, do a lot of things online and have to get rid of the DRM with the actual first day patch. And it's somewhat comparable to the whole entire PlayStation. Uh, you know, you have to do the update to be able to play things online and to be able to play uh, Blu-rays, but you can still actually play the games. But I'm going to get into that in just a minute. Uh, they also went on to say, uh, you know, oh, they wanted to know what cu customers expect to do without having the day one patch installed. Albert Pernetto said nothing. You need to have a day one update. Uh, a lot of the apps come with uh, the day one update because they don't even, uh, they don't have even been done. Uh, you're going to need to take this update. It's not uh, really going to be an optional thing. Functionally, you, you will be able to do very little without taking the day one update. I don't have a problem with you need an update. All systems got to be updated. Even the Wii U had to be updated. It's just a part of actually having game consoles. What I have a problem with is the way they're going about it. You see, Sony, when they came out and talked about their day one update, they said, okay, yeah, you can't play Blu-rays, you can't do uh, things online, you have to you know, have this day one update, but you can still play games. You can still do that. In order to get the day one update, uh, if you want to have internet connection, all you have to do is like call this number, we'll actually send you a disc, or you know, you can go to the library, use a USB, move the update on there. They're giving you fucking options. This is fuck you. How about giving them options, alternatives? What can they do? Can they call someone to get a disc? Because contrary to popular belief, I know everyone's like, oh, it's a five hundred dollar console, why can't you get fucking internet? Not every fucking person has internet out there. Somehow these game consoles are their only source of entertainment, which is why they're willing to spend so much to get them. So just to say, okay, I got internet, I'm good, fuck you, that's not cool. What about those people? You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that's going to need day one updates and going to lead a lot of shit to be able to get this fucking information. So they have to come out in some way, some way to say something. Hey guys, call this number, we're going we're gonna to ship you a disc, you know, go to the library, we're going to... You know, put the update on a freaking, you know, USB stick, you know, drive it in town, you know, because the option of carrying an Xbox One into someone's fucking business or whatever, it's not really a functional option for them, okay? So they need other alternatives, they need other options. So don't just ignore them, just because, you know, you got internet, understand other people's plight. And speaking of other Microsoft news, apparently, uh, Microsoft is losing two billion a year on fucking Xbox. Now, a lot of people, you know, know that they make a lot of money off uh, of Android royalties, and they make a boat a boatload of money off of that, around two billion. But their losses come primarily from Xbox. Uh, basically, for the last uh, few years, Microsoft reported a revenue and uh, operating losses for the entertainment and devices, which was the group that uh, housed Xbox, Windows Phone, and those Android royalty payments. Now, they made two billion from it. But, however, you have to look at the other side of it. The group always, uh, you know, seemed to be profitable, but that's largely because of Android money. Uh, their CEO person basically came out and said, you know, that uh, if you look back uh, other than Android profits, Microsoft is uh, probably losing about $2.5 billion on Skype, Xbox, and Windows Phone. Of the $2.5 billion, $2 billion in losses are attributable to the Xbox One platform. The whole Xbox as a whole, and that's why they were talking about separating it and making it his own company so it can rise and fall on its own and not drag Windows and Microsoft into their bullshit. Now, a lot of people wonder how they lose the money when they're making so much fucking money off of this shit. One of the ways they're losing money is by spending money. 
They are fucking spending boatloads of money to buy first party content. To buy all these fucking games and just throw micro dollars at people and they're losing fucking money off of it. So it's not a smart business plan, you know, to go, okay, we want day one uh, content on, you know, Call of Duty and all this other shit. So they just keep throwing money at people to try and get shit to go away. You can't buy love. Money can't buy it. It's not their fault that they keep raining money out on people and people still aren't responding to the Xbox One the way that they're responding to the PlayStation 4. You can't just buy people. Okay, well, money can't buy people, but it can rent them for a long time. But, uh, you know, they're spending a shitload of money on all these fucking game console fucking buyouts that they do to try and get all this information. You honestly think that Activision, EA, and all these people are just giving them first party content because they like them? No. They're throwing shitloads of money at them and saying, we'll give you about $50 million if you guys make this an Xbox exclusive. That's what they're doing. And it's not smart for business. Okay? Let your console rise and fall on its own fucking feet. Don't try and buy everything out. You know what I'm saying? Because Sony had to try and compete with that too by trying to get first party content. They could care less about it before, but now they got to start getting that shit because Xbox keeps throwing money at shit. Speaking of Call of Duty, guess what you're getting next year? More Call of Duty. Just when you thought you had enough, just when you thought that you could take a fucking break, there's another Call of Duty planned for next year. Every year. It's the Call of Duty Every Year Edition. And they don't see anything wrong with it. They think it's a great fucking idea. Uh, a, a, a new Call of Duty game will launch in 2014. Activision Blizzard uh, CEO Bobby Kotick confirmed that, you know, last night during an earnings call and discussed the company's financial results for the whole entire quarter of September 30th. Uh, they spoke with publishers about upcoming uh, product pipeline and it confirmed a new Call of Duty game and a new Skylanders game, which I don't think anyone has a problem with. Uh, he went on to say, uh, we also expect to launch a new Call of Duty and Skylanders titles and uh, major new potential franchises with Bungie's Destiny. Uh, no details uh, uh, about the new Call of Duty or Sky Skylanders were basically provided, but uh, their new Call of Duty game is aiming at hyper-realism, and it will reportedly feature a new, fresh, triple-A oral experience. Uh, meanwhile, Treyarch, you know, created Black Ops, you know, sub-brand, and all this other fucking bullshit. I fucking have had enough of Call of Duty. I'm sorry. This is probably going to be the last one I fucking buy for a while. I need a timeout. I need a break. It's not me. It's you. Okay? You're the fucking problem. You keep cranking out these games every fucking year. I know they make you a lot of money. We all know Call of Duty makes you a lot of money, but it's becoming Mario monotonous. It's the same thing over and over again. And you can try adding dogs and samurais and bunnies and whatever the fuck you think is going to make me go out and buy this new game, but I'm not going to fucking do it because I'm fucking tired. I need a break. We need a, we need a break. We need to see other people. There's nothing wrong with them taking a year or two off to make us miss it. Because right now, by the, you don't even use the actual uh, content. And ask me if I'm wrong. How many of you actually go on to like, you know, play Call of Duty or play any of these other games and, but you can't even get to the last download pack before the new Call of Duty comes out so then the other game becomes abandoned and it turns into a fucking ghost town. Now with the Battlefield thing, they keep theirs going for years before they make another Battlefield, which makes them miss it. I don't know. I think they need to fucking change some shit. Make a whole new Call of Duty franchise it has nothing to do with terrorists, nothing to do with none of that shit. Make it about, Knights and fucking kings and some Game of Thrones Call of Duty shit, you know, ancient warfare, something. Just don't keep bringing us the same fucking terrorist slang shit we see every fucking year because it's getting fucking old. Uh, that's all the news I got for y'all today. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll bring y'all more news as it becomes available. I have some new other stories I'm working on, but I, but you know I gotta verify that they're actually true first. Uh, that's all I got. I will holler at y'all later.